Welcome back to my darkroom. Today we're going to look at how to make a color print in the darkroom using the tricolor additive system and not the usual subtractive system. So the typical color print in the darkroom is made with a subtractive system, like color heads such as this. They use magenta and yellow in varying amounts to control your color, and they're weeding out the opposite colors. You can use them in combination uh, or just individually, and you make a single exposure and you're done. That's a great system to have. It's very convenient. It does take a little bit of time to learn, but single exposure and you're finished. The additive system, however, is a completely different method of making a color print. In this, we're going to use three different filters, a red, a blue, and a green, and we're going to make separate exposures onto the paper through each one, which means we're going to expose once through the red, once through the green, once through the blue, and then develop the paper. It's a little bit more complex, it takes a little bit more time, but it does create a really good color print. So we're gonna look at a print made with both systems so you can kind of see uh, how they look. Now, the additive system does have some flexibility. I am going to be using the three filters that are in the Kodak document for the Kodak Endura Premier paper. I am using Fuji paper, but you're getting the same sort of exposure and it works just as well. There are different filter combinations. We'll talk about that in just a second. So the filters that I'm using are a Rattan 25 red filter, a Rattan 99 green filter, and a Rattan 47B blue filter. As I said, these are the ones that Kodak recommends in their document for tricolor printing. The other colors you can use would be a 25 red, a 58 green, and a 47 blue, or you can use a 29 red, 61 green, and the 47B blue. Or if you really want to kind of nail down the color to very precise amounts, you can use a 70 red, the 99 green, like what I'm using here, and the 98 blue. The differences are the sharper cutting the filter, that is a filter like a 70 red versus the 25, is going to limit the spectrum to a very, very, very narrow window of just red and nothing really kind of bleeding over into the other tones. So you'll have a longer exposure time, but because it's narrowing that window, you're not going to have as much influence on the other colors uh, when you make changes to the red. I'm using the 25, so a little bit of time change on that can make your greens and blues a little bit different just by changing the red, but not much. A sharper cutting filter would limit that. So supposedly the 70 red, 99 green, 98 blue is what Kodak would use in their research lab, but we're gonna use what Kodak recommends in their documentation. So let's step over to the enlarger and talk about the particulars of how this is done. But before we get over to the enlarger, let's just take a quick moment to thank all of my Patreons. I do appreciate your support. If you'd like to help support this channel, then you can do things such as get merchandise like this t-shirt or maybe a C41 lab towel, uh, or you can go to my Patreon page or even the composition frames that I have made out of walnut. You can get all that down in the links below. Your support helps make this channel possible. All right, let's take a quick step back over here, make some prints. So let's look at our setup here. I've got my negative in here and I've already made a print using the color head. And that's what we're going to be kind of matching to see if we can get good color. So the print, used a combination of magenta and yellow, just like a normal RA4 print, and about a 12 second exposure time. 
I have now wiped all my filtration out. So there's white light only. We're not going to use these dials at all. The color is going to be controlled instead by different exposure times through each filter. So for example, if my blue is too strong, say I look at the print and everything is too blue, then I would print longer through the blue filter and that will make the print less blue. Okay. So that's how this works. It's absorbing all the blue light, allowing the print to become more yellow. I don't know how long I need to print for each filter. There are hints in the document uh, from Kodak that have based on their enlarger and what lamp you're using and all this, but basically the blue is a longer time, but I don't know how much longer. So I'm going to just take my 12 seconds exposure time and I'm just going to divide it evenly. So I'm going to do four seconds through each one and we're just going to see where we start. As far as getting the filter on uh, under the lens, you can just hold it. I am using uh, metal Kodak gel frames. They're just little metal frames that hold the gels. So I'm not actually touching the filter when I'm handling them. And then underneath I have a gel filter holder. You can use whatever system you like. Mine's just held on with a um, 43 millimeter filter step up ring. Cause that's what the lens is. It's a 100 millimeter Companon S from Schneider. So it's a 43 to uh, series seven adapter and then series seven to eight. Cause I have a lot of series stuff. And then the series eight holds onto a three inch gel holder. So you can use whatever you want. That's just the stuff that I already have. Otherwise you can just hold the filters under there, but uh, these times could end up being long and I don't want to sit there and hold them. Okay. All that being said, we've got our image already focused, ready to go. Negatives in there. Um, so the only thing we can do now is just turn the lights out and make our first exposure. Well, here's test strip number one. Uh, density is actually not too far off, but we're definitely way too blue. Let's go back to the enlarger and see what we need to change. So since we were far too blue, we're going to use the same red and green exposure. So we'll leave this at four seconds. So I'm going to do a test strip where the blue is eight seconds. Let's turn the lights out and do that one. Well, the color is definitely getting a little bit better, still too blue, but now we just have too light of an exposure. That means we're going to have to bump everything up. Let's go back to the enlarger and do the next one. Way too light. Blue's a little bit better, but it's just way too light. So we're going to change this to eight seconds for the red and the green. And will go up in blue as well. So if I'm going three times the amount, I don't know, like 20 seconds, maybe on the blue, we'll, we'll start with that and see what comes up. So I'm re raising all of them in order to keep the same color, but increase the overall density. So we'll see how that turns out. Let's hit the lights. All right, here we've done eight seconds each of red and green, 20 seconds of blue on the top. The bottom is 12, 12, and 30, respectively. The density of the top one is closer to our base print here, but clearly the color's not right, but our density's closer. That's just too dark. So we're going to go back to the eight, eight and 20 as a place to start, uh, for the next one. At this point, using my filters, I'm judging this is still a little too blue and maybe a little too magenta. Let's go to the next test strip. I think what I want to do is, well, we're ignoring this one. We're looking at this one here. Let's see. I want to do F stop printing which I don't normally do. So I'm gonna be a little slow on my math here. Let's see if that's 20 seconds blue. 10 would be one stop. Five would be a 
half stop, two and a half seconds would be a quarter stop. So I want to do 22.5 seconds of blue. And for the green magenta, see eight, so four would be a stop, two would be a half, one would be a quarter, half a second would be an eighth of a stop. So I'm going to do half a second less on my green. That should take out a touch of magenta. Eight seconds red, seven and a half seconds green, 22 and a half seconds blue. Let's go. Here's the latest one. So clearly I'm still a bit on the red side. Uh, this one, it was definitely golden hour, so I like the warmer yellow-red tone to it. So this is too cool. This would be more like a blue hour, which we definitely weren't in. The sun, by the way, looking at our original, the sun is just right here out of frame. Let's see. From here, I think we're still a touch too magenta. Looking at this with my green filter, let's take it down. See, I did seven and a half. Take this down just to seven. We'll take another half second off and see uh, if we can get rid of that last little bit of magenta that's in it. All right, here's the last one. This is eight seconds red, seven seconds green, 22 blue, or 22 and a half. Uh, because I can do two prints in the drum using the same chemistry, uh, I actually did a six second green, and that's just way too green. It's a very green print. So we, uh, we definitely don't want that. So I think this here, the um, seven and a half, or uh, rather the seven seconds, I think that's better. I'm still not as warm as my other print, so clearly we're not there yet matching, but we're getting a little bit better. At this point, I want to add some red. So at eight seconds, uh, I'm going to add half a second, or I rather I'm going to subtract half a second. So seven and a half red, seven and a half green, 22 and a half blue is the next one. Okay, here we are. Get our original. This one's still warmer. You can see that in the pavement. But on its own, this is actually a pretty good print. So if I weren't comparing it to anything, this might be uh, kind of a, a decent interpretation. I, I think we're still going to make some changes, not only to match, but just to fine tune the print regardless. But uh, it needed some red. Next step, we're going to take a little more off the red, so we're going to add a little bit more red to the print, so that means subtracting a little bit time on the red. And we're going to add a little bit of yellow by increasing the blue time. So the seven and a half red, let's go to seven. We'll keep the green at seven and a half. And then the 22 and a half blue, let's bump that to 24. Just a little tweak. Here we are seven red, seven and a half green, and 24 blue. Here's my other one, and it's pretty good. We can see there's a little bit of cool color down here in the pavement that I don't have in my subtractive print. Still a little bit cool in the shadows there, but my plants are starting to get more like what I saw. So we're, we're pretty close. We're pretty close. Um, I think we're going to keep these settings and then make another one with a little bit more yellow in it. So we're going to bump up to 27 blue. Is we're at 24. Yeah, so I'm going to add three seconds. <laughs> Whatever f-stop that comes out to be, uh, we're going to do three seconds more from 24. So that'd be 27 seconds in blue. So let's get to it. Okay. Okay. So here we are. Subtractive. Additive. And it's pretty close. We're, we're only a touch off. Only a touch off and a little bit of color. Uh, but it's getting pretty late. 
and uh, I'm being called out down to dinner so I think we're going to call it here but you can see uh, how fine-tuning our time on each step has given us pretty close I think I think if we had a little bit more time and paper we could get that exactly the same but let's uh, let's turn the lights on and wrap this up and there you have it a good print uh, it's not too complex I would say it's easy to make a good print with this method it's not necessarily easy to match a print made with a subtractive method uh, to a print made with the additive method. And that's really kind of what uh, the differences between these are. Is um, It's not incapable of doing it. It's that uh, it's already uh, dinner time and bedtime for my kids and I've been in here all day, so we're just we're just done for the day. I could narrow this down even more if I wanted to spend more time, but I just don't have the time. But you can get a really good print with this method. Get yourself some filters. You can get them online. You can get them on eBay. That's where I buy mine uh, from a lot of vendors that are just trying to unload their stock, so prices aren't too bad. Why would you do this? I don't know. <laughs> Other than the novelty, the only real reason I can think of is if you wanted to make a color print, but you only have a black and white enlarger. I have a color enlarger. It's convenient. I can make single exposure, small increment changes. I change my filtration without changing my exposure time, really, if it's small changes. And, and it's easy. This method with the filters... You are adjusting your different times for each filter to change your color. You're exposing three times. You can't mess up your aperture accidentally, swapping filters and all that sort of stuff if you don't want to really have uh, changes in your color that you don't expect. Which did happen to me. I accidentally turned the lens a little bit uh, on one. I didn't show that one. Um, and so it overexposed that color. Shifted it quite a bit um, because it was now twice the exposure. Other than that, it really is kind of a novelty. Uh, I wouldn't do this a lot, but if I did have to do it more, then it would become a lot more intuitive on how to adjust. This is the only time that I used f-stop printing because it was easier to keep track of the changes, but uh, it, it's not something that I would do regularly simply because I already had the equipment to do it a little bit more conveniently. But if you want to try it just to see what it looks like and just to get the experience, I highly recommend trying it at least once. And if you do it more than that, you'll probably get pretty quick with it. If you like the additive system but want the convenience of that, then look for like a Philips Enlarger. Uh, Bessler had a, I think it was the 45A, I could be wrong about that, uh, but they also had a additive system enlarger. And there might be a couple others out there. So... Thank you for watching. Uh, start making some prints. Try this, see what you think. And we will see you next time.